Good morning and welcome you all to this session of the course. Now today we will be solving some problems relating to axial compressors. Last class we discussed in brief the principle of operation and the degree of reaction of an axial compressor. Now today we will see that how we can solve problems and so that our understanding becomes much better. Now let us concentrate on one problem. This is the problem number one which we will be solving. The conditions of air, let me read out the problem first. The conditions of air at the entry of an axial flow compressor stage are P1 is given, the inlet pressure and temperature is given. The air angles are beta 1, so this nomenclature is known to us. This is the blade angle at inlet and beta 2, the blade angle at the outlet, that is the rotor blade angle at the inlet and outlet, that is 51 degree, both are 51 degree. And alpha 1 is alpha 2 is 8 degree, this is given, alpha 1 at the angle of the absolute velocity at the inlet and alpha 2 is the angle of the absolute velocity at the outlet of the rotor blade. That the mean diameter and peripheral speed are 0.5 meter is the mean diameter and this is the peripheral speed respectively. That means the peripheral speed at the mean diameter. The mass flow rate through the stage is 30 kg per second. The work done factor is 0.95. All these things are known to us. Mechanical efficiency is 90 percent. Assuming an isentropic stage efficiency of 85 percent, what are to be found out? We have to find out blade height at entry, stage pressure ratio and the power required to drive the stage. This is given for air, the characteristic gas constant 287 joule per kg k and the ratio of specific heat 1.4. Now, <coughs> sorry, to find out <coughs> the blade height at entry, first of all you have to understand that it is the geometry blade height which is basically related to the area at the inlet. So therefore, if we write the equation of mass flow rate, that thing we can, we have to select this equation to find this. We can write that rho 1 inlet density and the area at inlet and the velocity of flow which is same throughout. Now here, first of all, we have to find out A, rho 1. Now, A within A, that is the annulus area, the blade height is there. The blade height can be found out from the annulus area A. Now let us find out rho 1. So rho 1 at the inlet can be found out from the equation of state as P1 by RT1. Well, so P1 is what? P1 is given as 100 kilo Newton per meter square. So therefore 100 into 10 Newton per meter square. 100 kilo Newton into 10 to the power 3 P and if you write the value of R 287 and T is 300, we get the value of rho 1 and rho 1 comes out to be 1.16 kg per meter cube. All right, we get rho 1. How to get Vf, the flow velocity, is it giving, assuming an isentropic state, air, the flow velocity is not given. but we can find out the flow velocity from the expression we developed earlier that u by v f is what tan alpha 1 plus because we choose this expression flow velocity is not given but beta 1 and alpha 1 is given. So that we can find out the flow velocity at u. What is u? u is given 150 meter per second. So, 150 divided by tan alpha 1 plus tan beta 1. That means tan of 8 degree plus tan of 51 degree. And if you solve for it, you will get a velocity 109.60 meter per second. So, therefore, you can get the annulus area. But before that, you put annulus area in terms of this blade height. Annulus area is pi into the mean diameter into blade height. True. Where from does it come? It comes that annulus area is pi into 
outer diameter square minus inner diameter. If you consider the inner diameter as the diameter of the drum or disc and the outer diameter is the diameter of the casing, then this is the annulus area. This can be written as pi into d0 plus di sorry by 4, d0 plus di by 2 and d0 minus di by 2. Now, it is this is the mean diameter d0 plus di by 2 and this is the blade height. So, therefore, this can, this can be expressed in terms of the mean diameter and blade height that area. So, therefore, now if I substitute here we can write m dot, m dot is given 30 kg per second is equal to rho 1 1.16 into Vf first I write Vf because I have found out Vf 109.60 into pi what is that dm? dm is given as 0.5 meter, okay, 0.5 meter it is given. So, therefore, pi into 0 0.5. So, only unknown is your blade height h, which gives h equals to rather h1 the blade height at the inlet. So, I write h1 blade height at the inlet. So, h1 is 0 equals to 0.15 meter. So, the first part is over the h1 blade height at entry. How to find out stage pressure ratio? Stage pressure ratio is simple to find out. Stage pressure ratio to find out what you have to do? You have to find out the static temperature, the stagnation temperature ratio or the stagnation temperature difference. Otherwise, you cannot find out the static pressure ratio. So, h1 is known. Now, let us find out write this formula that Cp into delta T ST that means the stagnation temperature is equal to today last class we have discussed that it is the work done factor into UVF by C, Cp is always there UVF into tan beta 1 minus tan where from it comes that this is the work done per unit mass this is equal to Cp delta T ST. So, therefore, this is multiplied with a work done factor. So, here what we have? We have u, we have vf, we have beta 1, we have beta 2. So, we can find out delta t s t. We can write this. What is the value of lambda here? Lambda is 0 0.95, it is given. Well, then the u is 150 meter per second. Vf, we have calculated just now 1, 1. 90, I am sorry, Vf is 109, no, Vf will come out as 109, yes, yes, Vf is 109.60. So, um, this is lambda u into Vf, Vf is 190.60, that is the Vf we have calculated and tan of into tan of 51 degree minus tan of 10 degree divided by Cp. Now, Cp value you can calculate here. Here, Cp is not given. Even if it is not given, you can take that. In this problem, gamma and characteristic gas constant is given. Cp can be found out as gamma by gamma minus 1. That means 1.4 divided by 0 0.4 into 287. That is the joule per kg. That means, if you find out Cp, it will be 1005 joule per kg. This is the standard value of Cp for air. So, Cp then you can find out delta T S T and that becomes delta T S T becomes equals to if you calculate it, I tell you the value 16.37 degrees Celsius. Then you can find out the pressure ratio R s as I have told that this is the nomenclature and this is the formula. Again and again we tell this will be 1 plus the isentropic stage efficiency that is eta s the isentropic stage efficiency delta this formula I have told inlet temperature divided by gamma by gamma minus. Okay? So, this can be written as 1 plus this substituted the value substitute if you can substitute the value delta T S T is 16.37 divided by 300 
and if you put the value of gamma then you get the value of the stage pressure ratio as 1.17. Third one is that what is the third one? The power required to drive the stage. Power required is very simple because this is the, the Cp delta Tst. Cp delta power required is what? Power per unit mass into the mass flow rate. Mass flow rate into Cp delta Tst. So, delta Tst we know this already we have found out multiply with the Cp that means this part that means actually this part. So, this part we know and mass flow rate already we know 30 kg given in the problem 30 kg per second. So, therefore, if we put the value Cp this one delta Tst 16.37 degree Celsius and mass flow rate 30 kg per second you get a value of 548. 0.39 kilowatt. If you be consistent in the unit, finally you will get this result. This is the power. So, this is one example that we can work with. Uh, next, another problem I will tell you where you have some idea about the degree of uh, reaction. Okay? So, this problem is this. The preliminary design of an axial flow compressor is to be based upon a simplified consideration of the mean diameter conditions. Suppose that the characteristics of a repeating stage of such a design are as follows. That means a particular stage, these are repeated for different stages. Stagnation temperature rise is given. That means indirectly the work done on the fluid is given. Degree of reaction is given. Flow efficiency is given 0 0.5, but this is actually not flow efficiency. I think it will be better if you write it as flow number. Vf by u is actually flow number. Sometimes they write at flow efficiency. However, flow number, blade speed, that means it is the ratio of flow velocity to the peripheral speed. Peripheral speed is also separately given 300. That means we get Vf multiply 0.5 with that. Then what is the problem? Assuming constant axial velocity across the stage and equal absolute velocities at inlet and outlet, that means V1 is equal to V3 that we have already done, determine the blade angles of the rotor for a shock free flow. That means there is no incident loss. So, how to find uh, work out this problem? Now, this problem if you work out, you see that the degree of reaction is given. Now, first of all, we know the stagnation temperature rise. So, first of all, we find out the work per unit mass is equal to is known. That is what? That is Cp into delta Tst. And what is Cp? Cp is 1005 joule per kgk and that is 30. And finally, this becomes equal to your work per unit mass. Now, how to find out beta 1 and beta 2? So, what we have to find out? We have to find out beta 1 we have to find out beta 2, the two angles. Okay? You remember that beta 1, beta 2. So, I tell you again that this one we have to find out. We have to find out beta 1, beta 2. So, what we will do? We will take some of this relationship tan beta 1 minus tan beta 2 tan b is equal to work done. Where you will get that formula? That Vf, okay, I am coming to it again. It was done earlier. If you remember that W by M is VW2 minus VW1 into U and that becomes is equal to U into Vf into tan beta 2 minus tan beta 1. Now, we know U, we know Vf. Vf is 300 into 0 0.5. U is 300. U is 300 meter per second. Well, and you can see, I think you can see very well, and Vf is 300 into 0 0.5, that is 150 meter per second, tan beta 2, tan beta 1, beta 2 and beta 1, we have to find out. W by M we know. So, therefore, if we put this here and this value here, we get a relationship tan beta 2 minus tan beta 1 
equals to what? tan beta 2 minus 0 point you get. Everything is known. Now, we have to get another relationship relating beta 2 and beta 1 that will come from the relationship of degree of reaction. Now, degree of reaction if you remember is given by u by v f degree of relation is v f by u v f by 2 u. If you remember that today we have done it or last class we have done it tan beta 2 tan beta 1 plus beta 2. So, we have done these things. So, here all we know V f by u, V f by u is 0 0.5 that means 0 0.6 that means rather I write here, I write here it will be better 0 0.6 is 0 0.5, V f by u is 0 0.5 it is given in the problem by 2 into tan beta 1. So, it is a simple problem which gives a relationship tan beta 1 plus tan beta 2 is it is what 1.2 to 2.4 it is very simple. So, this is one relation and this is one relation. So, as simple as this and finally, if you solve for tan beta 1 and tan beta 2 finally, you get beta 1 is 56.92 degree and beta 2 is 40.86 degree these are the answers you can check. So, therefore, with the degree of reaction you can that is only that we have to deal with the equations which equations will be required depending upon the parameters given. So, these are the problems which clear makes your concept more clear. Now, after this I will start the fans and blowers. So, fans and blowers there is nothing much different from that of compressor. The different is like this the, as I told earlier at the beginning of my fluid machines class that the when the output for a compressible flow for example, that uh, handling air at the outlet of a machine where energy is given and we get the fluid at the outlet of the machine having higher energy acquired stored energy. If that is mostly in the form of high pressure static pressure, but less velocity we call it as compressor whether it is centrifugal it is axial. But when the basic purpose is to have fluid with very high velocity where we have to deliver high rate of flow with high velocity of flow. Therefore, there the machine must deliver the fluid with higher energy by absorbing energy from outside mostly in the form of the kinetic energy with high velocity, but relatively much less pressure static pressure those machines are known as fans and blowers. So, fans and blowers and compressor of same kind in a sense that they take energy from outside and the fluid flowing through it gains its internal energy, but for fans and blowers this energy is mostly in the form of kinetic energy rather than pressure static pressure is more of velocity rather than static pressure. Now, amongst fans and blowers fans are those machines where the static pressure at the outlet of the machine is few millimeter of water gauge. You can understand that atmospheric pressure is 10 meter of water gauge. It is so less few millimeter of water gauge whereas, in case of blower it is something more than 1000 millimeter of water gauge still it is very less 10 meter of water gauge is the atmospheric pressure. So, this is the pressure gauge pressure that means above the atmosphere at the outlet. Why this pressure is so low and why the pressure is required? First of all pressure is required because these machines deliver air for some purpose that means air has to flow it may be required that to make the, to uh, supply the air through a duct. So, therefore, we have to overcome the friction of the duct that means, this flow has to take place through a duct it has to overcome the frictional resistance not only through a duct through a room. So, therefore, downstream resistance has to be frictional resistance has to be overcome to deliver that flow. So, these machines develop that pressure sufficient to overcome the resistance. Now, in case of blower it handles more amount of air where less amount of air is handled and is circulated or being sent through a duct 
we employ fans for which the frictional resistance is less. So therefore, a relatively less static pressure is required at the delivery end of the machine. Whereas in case of blowers which handles more air and at a high velocity it may have to be conveyed or transported through a long duct, the frictional resistance is much more. That means it has to overcome more frictional resistance so that the pressure drop is more. In, as a consequence, the static pressure at the outlet of the machine has to be higher. This is the reason for which blower for blower static pressure is higher because it handles more amount of air. So this is the difference between blower and a uh, fan. So fan and blowers are basically the compressors, but in this case, the static pressure at the end of the machine is much lower as compared to its velocity. So you see a typical centrifugal fan or blower here. I will show you uh, simultaneously. Uh, I do not know. It, it uh, may be a uh, little difficult. Okay, I will try it. Uh, uh, yes, uh, this is the thing. So let me show you. Uh, this is the thing. Let me just a minute. Let me let me make these things. Let me show you like this. Let this is a typical centrifugal uh, fan or blower. Now centrifugal fan or blower consists of an inlet. This is the impeller. The same principle. The impeller which imparts the energy to the fluid. Then after the impeller, impeller, there is a spiral casing known as volute chamber, spiral or scroll casing. This is the volute where this gains the energy in terms of both velocity and pressure rise at the end of the impeller, high velocity and high pressure. Some of the velocities are then converted in the volute chamber to static pressure depending upon the requirement at the outlet of the machine. So this is the picture. This can be shown if we take a section like this, then it is this. This is the impeller. You see it. So this is the inlet. The flow at the inlet takes place through a nozzle. That means there is a little acceleration of the flow before it enters into the impeller. Now impeller, it goes radially in the same way that it happens in a centrifugal uh, compressor. That means it is sucked or it is induced the axial direction, then the flow change in the radial direction. So this is the radially outward flow. Then it comes out and this is the volute casing and this is the outlet. So this is the main component of a centrifugal fan and compress, a centrifugal fan or blower. So after this, I will tell you about the, uh, the, the typical type of blades in the, um, in a, uh, blower or fan. Now blower or fan both are the same machines as I have told only the static pressure rise is different for blower and fan and depending upon the flow rate required the fan blade shape is different. Now three types of blade shapes from the fluid mechanical principles are used I tell you. One is known as forward swept blade you see this left one. What is that? If you consider the motion in this direction, that means this is the direction of rotation. That means the peripheral speed is in this direction, the tangential motion. So curvature of the blade is in the direction of the motion. This is known as forward swept blade. Another type of blade is this is known as radial blade. This is known as this is known as this is forward forward swept blade. Forward swept blade blade forward swept blade forward swept blade so this type of blade is known as a radial blade a radial blade what is the radial blade radial blade their outlet that means at the outlet the blade is radial but at the inlet there is a curvature and this curvature is forward swept why because this is the direction of the motion the curvature in the direction of the motion so radial blades are radial outward flat but it is curved at the inlet which is forward swept another is the backward swept that means its curvature this is the direction of the motion its curvature is in the opposite direction of the motion so velocity triangles will definitely change that I will tell you, you can understand because the direction of velocity and the curvature of the blades are in the opposite direction and relative directions are changed. Now before that I tell you the forward swept blades are used where 
large flow rates are required, relatively large flow rates and higher pressure rise is required as compared to backward swept blade. Whereas radial blades are preferred where the fluid that is air used contains more impurities and dust. This is because of the fact that these are less prone to the blockage and they work more efficiently with the dust laden gas. So therefore, these radial blades are preferred for that. Now, if we see the velocity triangle, so velocity triangle at the inlet, for example, in the radial, you see this is same for all the blades. What is that? There is the inlet velocity is axial, absolute velocity direction, this is the axial direction, axial. This has got no component in the tangential direction, that is VW1 component is 0, VW1 is 0. Everything that is the problem here, V VW1 is 0, VW1 is 0, okay, VW1 is 0. You see, that can be seen, VW1 is 0 can be seen, huh? it's seen, VW1 is 0. So, radial blades, so entry for all blades are same, that is VW1 is axial, this is the relative velocity which matches the angle of the blade, this is the peripheral velocity, this makes the vector diagram that is the velocity triangle. Now at the outlet also you see this is the peripheral speed, this is the direction of the flow, a direction of the uh, rotation speed. This velocity that is the relative velocity matches the blade angle that means it is radially outward and this is the absolute velocity, alpha 2 is the absolute velocity angle. Beta 1 is the angle of the blade at the inlet and this is alpha this is 90 degree, this is the beta 2 which is radial. This is alpha 2 is the angle of the absolute velocity. Now, let us see the velocity triangle for the forward swept blade. The velocity triangle for the forward swept blade is this one, is this one. Huh? This is the, it is visible, it is visible velocity diagram. Let me draw the velocity diagram here, I think. For you, it will be forward swept blade, I write. So, this is the inlet diagram, it is already same as that, that means there is no tangential component, it is axial and this is the, now here forward swept, this is the U, the direction of U is this. So, therefore, the direction of U, this is uh, vr1 okay and this is the u and this is the vr1 this is the beta1 okay vr1 is equal to v1 u1 minus u1 very good because they differ it is a radial flow machines radial outward now at this end what will happen this will be my radial flow a, 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 sorry, relative velocity directions and this will be the, the diagram will look like this. So, this will be obviously from the VR2, this will be U2 which will be higher than U1 and this will be the V2. So, this is the simple diagram because the velocity is in this direction. So, it has to be like that. In this case, this is defined as the, this is defined as the beta 2. That means in the positive sense u2 is this direction with this, this is an obtuse angle. This is this angle beta 2 with the tangent and this angle is alpha 2. So, this is the velocity triangle which is shown here like this. I think you can see, but this diagram I think is very difficult to see. The things are not properly shown not legible. However, now for a backward swept, backward swept, this can be visible. Now, backward swept one, I again draw it here. For the backward swept, what will be that? So, this curvature is in the opposite direction. That means, this is like this. This is in the opposite direction, but the direction of peripheral velocity is like this. So, here also, so this is the same thing that this is the inlet velocity triangle, okay. This is the inlet velocity triangle, 
this is v r 1, this is v 1, let this is this is u 1, sorry, u 1 and this angle is beta 1. So, the outlet angle for example, here or here I can draw the velocity, this relative velocity is this. Then what is this velocity? Relative velocity is this direction. Okay, that is v r 2. Then this velocity is in this direction. This velocity is in this direction. So, therefore, the absolute velocity will be. So, this looks very odd. So, a little more the relative this is u 2, this will be v 2. So, this will be. Now, if you draw it in scales for a given value of u 2 at the outlet and for a fixed value of v f, you will see that for forward swave blade, the component that v 2 is more and the component that v w 2 that this one v w 2 is much more compared to this, this is v 2, this v w 2. So, therefore, you see v w 1 is 0, therefore, work done per unit mass is again v w 2 u 2, since v w 1 u 1, v w 1 is 0. So, therefore, in this case, this is okay, understandable. So, in this case, v w 2 is more than this and that is the reason that forward swave blade is used where we require more work and more flow will be available and more static pressure rise will be there. Okay. So, more work will be imparted to the can be imparted to the fluid flowing through it. So, three types of possible blade configuration forward swave, radial blade and backward swave blades are possible. So, with this now other treatments I tell you in the axial flow uh, fans and uh, compressors are almost identical to that of the centrifugal compressors which I have told in case of uh, centrifugal uh, blowers and centrifugal uh, uh, fans. Now, with this I will go on uh, solving a problem. Let us see this problem. A centrifugal fan, okay, uh, a centrifugal fan running at 1500 that is 1500 rpm has inner and outer diameter of the impeller as 0.2 meter and 0.24 meter. That is the inner diameter of the impeller, outer diameter of the impeller. The absolute and relative velocities of air at entry are 20. So, absolute and relative velocities of air at entry are these respectively and those. That means, exit, entry and exit absolute and relative velocities are given. The flow rate is 0 0.6 kg per second. The motor efficiency is 80 percent. Determine the stage pressure rise, degree of reaction and the power required to drive the fan assuming the flow to be incompressible with density of air as 1.2 kg per meter. Now, this particular problem I tell you will make your total understanding of the fan uh, or uh, blower clear. So, let us first see that what this problem tells. Now, this problem tells that velocity absolute and relative is given. Now, if you recall this type of problem what you will do? First you have to find out the stage pressure rise. So, how to find out the stage pressure rise? So, you have to find out. So, first of all you find out the stage pressure rise by which expression? You have to find out the stage pressure rise. Stage pressure rise means what? The total pressure rise in this stage. Okay. So, total pressure rise in this stage depends upon the work done, total work done. If you first find out the work done per unit mass. What is the work done per unit mass? Now, if you remember the work done per unit mass is V w 2 u 2 minus V w 1 u 1. Without going for a change in temperature, stagnation temperature so far we did. This is because this problem is told that assuming the flow to be incompressible. So, for an incompressible flow better we do this type of analysis that this is the this is true for any fluid incompressible or compressible. 
if you remember that this work done part v w 1 u 1 that is work done that is w by m can be written as different components if you remember that is v 2 square that is work done on the fluid minus v 1 square by 2 plus u 2 square minus u 1 square by 2 okay plus v r 1 square minus v r 2 square by 2. This I explained in details in one earlier class of our fluid machines that this can be splitted like this from the geometry of the velocity triangles. Why it is required? Because this gives a very clear understanding. This is the gain in kinetic energy where the absolute velocity here in terms of compressor, in terms of pump, in terms of fans blowers where the fluid gains energy V2 is always greater than V1. So, this is the gain in the kinetic energy, this is the gain in the kinetic energy or dynamic we sometimes tell as dynamic head. It is per unit mass, usually energy per unit mass or unit weight we call it as head and this too is the gain in the static head. Why? Why it is called static head or static energy which is not very much used that means this is manifested in terms of the increase in the pressure of the fluid. This is because of the change in this is the change in the peripheral velocity at outer radius and inner radius and the fluid therefore when it reaches an outer radius from inner radius gains in static pressure and that change in the pressure energy is given by u2 square minus u1 square by 2. Similarly, the change in static pressure because of the change in the relative velocity. This is again another part of the diffusion that means change in the relative velocity takes place where vr1 is more than vr2 that means vr2 is less than vr1. So, passage is made in such a way that vr2 is less is a diverging passage for which the pressure is gained. So, this pressure is gained out of the momentum change or the change in the kinetic energy relative to the blade passage. So, these two this is due to the centrifugal action the radial pressure gradient is imposed I told many times and this is because of the diffusion from the change in the kinetic energy V r 1 is higher V r 2 is lower. So, therefore, pressure is lower and pressure is higher at the outlet. So, the combination of these two is the static head static energy and in this connection I like to tell you again this is a very important concept for all of you that in a radial flow machine so that it is outward or inward even if the passage is uniform there is no change in the relative velocity still there is a change in the static pressure rate because of the change in the u the peripheral velocity. In case of a turbine there is a loss in pressure in case of a pump or compressor there is a rise in pressure. So, therefore, any radial flow machines outward or inward has to have some pressure change in the rotor at least by this one. But along with that if you make a diffusing passage in case of compressor there will be an additional pressure rise ok. So, this to sum up give the static head or static energy this is very important I want to repeat it again. So, here what happens I know V 2 I know V 1 I know V r 1 I know V r 2 because all the relative velocities that inlet and outlet is given. And again I know u2 u1 because the impeller diameters are given and the speeds are given. I am not solving this problem. So, I just write u2 is pi d2 n and u1 is pi d1 n. n is given rotational speed 1500 1500 rpm. So, that we can 1500 rpm so that we can do these things better I write here. So, that u1, u2 I find out, u1 this way, u2 this way we can find out and then what we do we can find out the work done. Now, if we know this work done for an incompressible situation, we can write that delta p stage is nothing but rho times this work done per unit mass, work done per unit mass. That means, you just multiply with rho this with rho you get the delta p per stage total in the stage you find out the delta p 
okay fine now static pressure rise is this one so delta p static in the rotor because this is in the rotor delta p static in rotor is equal to rho into let this part i denote at x rho into x so this part is denoting at x rho into x so if you find out this by putting this value you get delta p the total stage that means impeller and the diffuser total delta p stage because the work is done only in the impeller delta p total is 221.11 okay newton per meter square and delta p in rotor or static pressure rise static okay so that is static pressure across the stage is 110.71 newton per meter square now here this delta p static divided by total one is known as this is the static pressure rise in the rotor and this is the total pressure rise this is the total energy given okay so therefore the degree of reaction in this case we define as delta p stage sorry delta p static this already i did earlier delta p stage now one thing just 221.11 divided by 110.70 Oh, sorry. It is just reverse. Under ten point seven one by two twenty one point one one. This will be roughly point five. Now here, this is very simple. This is numerical. But thing is that what is the concept? Earlier also, if you recall the earlier discussions, that the degree of reaction was defined in terms of the total pressure change in the machine. That is change in the total pressure in the machine. divided by the change uh, sorry change in the static head or the static pressure in the machine divided by the total head or the total energy given in the machine and this definition holds true for every machine in case of centrifugal compressor and axial flow compressor this was manifested in terms of the enthalpy change where you considered along with the temperature change okay but here what happens when you consider the flow to be incompressible with a constant density of air and there is no change in temperature so therefore this degree of reaction is better to be estimated by that definition which we discussed in case of hydraulic machines that delta p static divided by delta p stage okay so this is the same so therefore we find this now next is the power required what is the next one the and the uh, the stage pressure rise degree of reaction and the power required to drive the fan how to find out the power required power required is very simple power power required we can write here power required is the mass flow rate into work per unit mass that means work per unit mass is this one and you can find out the mass flow rate what is the mass flow rate the flow rate is 0.6 kg per second so therefore 0.6 kg per second you know mass flow rate w by m that divided by the mechanical efficiency probably there is a motor efficiency of 80% that means you write the motor efficiency that means you write the motor efficiency in the denominator that means you the, the mass flow rate is given as in this problem 0.6 kg per second now w by m which is calculated i have only calculated here i have told you the value of delta p stage actually w by m here W by m calculated will be one eighty four point two six joule per kg. This is so. Therefore, this will be point six into one eighty four point two six divided by zero point eight, which is ultimately in you know one thirty eight point one nine watt. Okay. so this is the thing that means this problem is looked from a different angle that work done per unit mass is true that is the euler's equation this can be splitted in this term for an incompressible flow with a constant density it is better to looked upon this way that this is the static head rise and this is the kinetic energy some of all these three is the energy input to the machine and that is the total head that is 
raised in the fluid. So, this is the denominator there per stage and this is the numerator. Okay. So, therefore, the degree of reaction is this divided by this. It was discussed earlier when I discussed the hydraulic machines in general, this is the degree of reaction. So, this is worked out to be this numerically delta P stage which is found out rho times the work done per unit mass. That is the total pressure change in the machine and the static pressure change in the machine is rho times this part. This is x again I repeat this part the static head that means this is the energy per unit mass. This into rho is the delta P static. So, delta P static by delta P stage is this one is 0 0.5 clear. Now, after this I will tell you something else that what is fan loss because sometimes you will see that people tell about fan loss. What is fan loss? This is a terminology actually. Now, in general for any fluid machines, when I discuss the similarity principles, one of the earlier lectures in fluid mechanics from all the variables involved in a fluid machines, in the physics of fluid machines rather I will tell, we derive by application of Buckingham's pi theorem, the different pi terms as the criteria of similarity parameters. If you recall that, see my earlier lecture note, then you will find these terms are like this q by one term is like this n d q, another term is g h by there are five terms n square d square, another term is rho n d square by mu. Another term is P by rho n cube d phi. Another term is E by rho divided by n square d square. Now, these are all pi terms. This is let phi 1, this is pi 2. This was told at length in one of the earlier class. There are 5, 4 and 5. Now, when we derive the pi terms for centrifugal compressors, we had 4 pi terms. This is because this term we neglected. The effect of viscosity we did not take. In fact, the viscosity has less effect in fluid machines. Why? I will tell you now. Earlier also I told. But these 4 terms we got, but not in this fashion, in a different fashion. I told you earlier in last classes, this is an essence or corollary of uh, pi theorem that that depends upon the choice of the repeating variable. You arrive number of terms are same, you arrive some pi terms which may not match exactly the pi terms you want or the way you express the result. Then a combination of the pi terms is also a pi term. So, different combinations can be made by making the numbers same so that you arrive at different pi terms. So, therefore, the pi terms of centrifugal complexes which we derive can be recoupled or rearranged to get the similar type of thing. So, this uh, thing where earlier explained, I am not going into detail of it, but this term I tell you as you know, this term represents a short of Reynolds number because rho n d is the velocity u d by mu. That means, this u is the peripheral speed. That means, it is a Reynolds number based on peripheral speed. So, it can be changed to Reynolds number based on other flow velocities also. Physically, it represents a short of Reynolds number. Now, in fluid machines, the flow is highly turbulent. So, in those turbulent flows, the Reynolds number has got very less influence on the flow parameter, mainly in the pressure loss or any other parameter, the Reynolds number does not have much influence. So, therefore, in centrifugal compressors also, we have not included the property mu to find out the dimensionless term. So, therefore, in the fluid machines earlier, I also told this term is not of that relevance. So, only these terms are relevance. Now, if you take this term, now you see it is not only for fan, for any fluid machines that if you, now this term is a non-dimensional power rho n cube d phi. This term you know that E by rho is the square of the acoustic speed or speed of sound in the fluid medium relative to the fluid and this is the square of the peripheral velocity. So, therefore, this is some sort of 
square of the Mach number, Mach number square type of thing. So, therefore, you see that now if you see all these pi terms, now you see that for any fluid machines, if we make the fluid machine same, machines of same size, machines of same size, machines of same size, machines of same size, then we can tell that Q is proportional to N because D is same from this pi term, first pi term, which gives Q1 by N1 is Q2 by N2. This is school level things. From the second pi term, we see that head because flow and the head is very important. What is head? This is GH. That means energy per unit mass. Head means energy per unit weight. That means this is the energy either gained by the fluid or developed by the fluid or given away by the fluid depending upon whether it is a compressor, pump or turbine. H is proportional to N square. That means H1 by N1 square is H2 by N2 square. Similarly, now if we take this term, then we can write power is proportional to N cube which means that P by P1 by N. That means this is the scaling law P2 by. That means we are interested in three quantities Q, H and P. And multiplication of these two is this one. So, if it is proportional to N, this is N square, it has to be N cube. That means power is proportional to N cube, head is proportional to N square, Q is proportional to N for same side. And machine of different sizes, but at same speed, different sizes, sizes, but at same speed, one can derive from this formula that Q is proportional to d cube, H is proportional to d square. Obviously, if you know these two, you do not have to see the pi term, otherwise pi term is wrong. That means it has to be d5. That means Q1 by D1 Q is Q2 by D2 Q. Q H1 by D1 5 is H2 D1 square is H2 by D2 square. And similarly, P1 by D1 5 is P2. This is so simple D2 5. That means the scaling laws with speed for the same size and with size which is represented by the impeller diameter as a representative characteristic size for the same speed is known as this is this scaling based on the similarity parameters of fluid machines and valid for all fluid machines. But usually because this grew like this that initially the fans and blowers when they were designed to make the prototype they used this type of scale. So, till date this scaling laws are known as fan laws in designing the fan. So, therefore, while studying the fans, we must know what is fan law. Fan law is nothing but the scaling law for the volumetric flow rate, the head that means the energy per unit weight or energy per unit mass. You can take GH, does not matter, G is constant and the power with the speed for the same side and with the side for the same speed and known as fan laws. So, I think today mm, we will stop here and uh, uh, we have we, I like to close the lecture on these fans blowers and uh, last class we discussed the axial flow compressors before that we discussed the centrifugal compressors and including all today I will stop or I will close my lecture series on fluid machines initially hydraulic machines basic principles of fluid machines hydraulic machines and then uh, centrifugal compressors axial flow compressors and the fans and blower. So, next class we will start the compressible flow. Okay, thank you.